Maybe she had the pumpkin the whole time. I don't know. So she walks down to the edge of the street, and she sits there for a little while, waiting for Annie to show up to pick her up. And while she's sitting there, she's, you know, she's smiling, looking out at the trick-or-treaters. And for some reason, I don't know how this happened, but someone took her picture. Like, if you watch Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, Jamie Lloyd has a picture of Laurie Strode looking, they, that, they, that pose, that picture. So, maybe there's, was there someone else stalking her or what? What happened there? Okay, so Annie shows up and then they talk a little bit. You know, then they smoke, they smoke a joint because smoking's cool. And then we get to Dr. Loomis and the Graveyard Keeper. And then the Graveyard Keeper starts telling the story about, is it Charlie Bones or Charlie Bowles? Yeah, he tells a story about, you know, how he went crazy, he kissed his wife and his children goodbye, and then he did, and then Dr. Loomis just cuts him off in the middle of his story. What a dick. But uh, we find out that the uh, Judith Myers gravestone is taken. Is that why he went out there in the first place? Just to see if, you know, sh he did take it? Or wh why were they going out there in the first place? Uh -huh. So Annie and Lori are talking about, I guess, the big dance coming up and just, you know, dressing up and looking pretty. And then Lori, you know, she doesn't have a date. No one wants to be with her because she's lame. And then she talks about how she's in, she likes Ben Tramer. Because I guess Ben Tramer's cute. Like, we don't really know. We never see his face. We just see his... He happens to look like Michael Myers later that night. So, yeah, and then they're, they drive, and then they run into uh, Sheriff Brackett, which is Annie's dad. And then they're at Nichols Hardware Store. It, it, apparently it just got robbed, right? And so, yeah, they, he said that they took a Halloween, a Halloween mask, a rope, and a couple of knives. This is like 6.30 in the evening. Michael Myers took his mask at like maybe 7 or 8 in the morning. That's, how long is that? That's like, that's 10 hours. It took them 10 hours to get to that Nichols hardware store for the police to show up? That is slower than FEMA. That is terrible. That, that is the crappiest police station I have ever heard of in any horror movie. Ever. Okay. And then, you know, Tommy Dollar, he looked like he just lived maybe a couple of streets down from Lori, like, you know, like, just maybe, I don't know, not even a mile, but they look like they're driving way out of their way to get there. Like, why did, why, why do they need to drive all the way to Tommy Dollar's house, which could probably be like a few street, you know, maybe a, a street or two away. I don't know. And then I'll, screw it. Okay, so it gets nighttime. And then, you know, Lori goes to babysit um, Tommy Doyle, and then Annie goes across the street to babysit Lindsay Wallace. And then Dr. Loomis takes Sheriff Brackett to go to the Myers house to look around for, I guess, Michael. They see a dog in the corner, which they never really show, but they just apparently like, oh, look, over there is a dog. I guess Michael ate it and got hungry. But it's only in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 do we ever actually see Michael eat a human dog. Wait, did I just say a human dog? Yes, I did. Michael eats a human dog. It's crazy, isn't it? So Dr. Loomis waits around in the Myers house, and he tells Sheriff Brackett his, his, in for his famous, you know, uh, the, the, the devil's eye speech. I don't know if I can recite it all the way for full. I'll, I'll try, though. I met him 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscious, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death of good or evil, right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him, and another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Hey, I did it. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, he, you know, share bag is, oh, that's just fancy talk. And this is all your fault, Dr. Lemus, for letting him out. So Dr. Loomis kind of stays there, just on the off chance that Michael will come back to his house. And then I guess Sheriff Brackett's out looking around. He, he, he wants to notify people, and then Dr. Loomis says, don't tell them because they'll be looking for him on every street corner. Just tell your men to keep their mouths shut and their eyes open. Looks like you'd want to tell people just to have, you know, people, extra people looking instead of just those two. I mean, that's kind of a, a lame move for Dr. Loomis. But don't worry, later in the night, they'll, 
they'll get to it. They'll, they'll have more people out looking for them. So then we see Flory's reading some King Arthur book to Tommy Doyle, and he's, he's bored with it, so he pulls out his generic comic books. One's Tarantula Man, which is, I guess, generic Spider-Man. Then he gets a cough, yeah, they get a cough of Manny, and then she she tells Lori that he, that she told uh, Ben Tramer about that Lori has a crush on him, and for like a minute she's like, oh, please tell me you didn't. How could you do that? Please tell me you didn't do it. It goes on for like a minute. And then Tommy Doyle, he sees across the street that Michael Myers is there. He followed them that whole time. And then there's something about his car later. We'll get to that. So, yeah, then as, as soon as he goes and tells Lori that Michael is over there, she looks out the window and he's gone. And so, that's, yeah, that's, that's the power of the boogeyman. And then she's, yeah, she spilled, she spills butter on her, like her pants, it's like a little tiny little bit of butter. And then so, and then that pisses her off and she starts ripping off all her clothes. Like, oh, she has to f f clean all her clothes now. That's the doubt that she got just a tiny little bit of butter on her. And then, yeah, <clears throat> sorry, I've been talking for 15 minutes. Give me a break. Okay, so, uh, what happens next? Then, okay, she she goes out to the laundromat, which, I mean, out outside, they have their their washer dryer outside. Looks like they'd have it inside. Who has their dryer washer outside? That's weird. So, this little girl, Lindsay Wallace, she's watching The Thing, which I guess kids back in the 70s like to watch old movies, which John Carpenter later directed, directed a remake to The Thing. And then there's a prequel to The Thing, like, a couple of years ago. Everyone keeps calling that prequel a remake. That pisses me off. That that's like that's like calling the the new vacation movie a remake, which it isn't. It's a sequel. All right. So then they get a they get a call from Paul, which is Annie's you know boyfriend, and he says that his parents left us and that she can go get him now. And so she's happy about that. So she's gonna pawn Lindsay off on Lori. And then she goes out to her car, and she, she forgets her key, so she has to go all the way back inside. And she goes all the way back outside. And then she opens the door, which it was locked earlier, and she, and she was singing while she was doing this, so she couldn't really, she didn't think about that. And she was like, what? And then, like, there's was, was like this heavy breathing on the window, and then Michael was in the car, and he strangles the crap out of her, right? And then she, he slits her throat. She did. She did it. She, but don't worry, she'll be back in Halloween 3, because I'm convinced that Annie Brackett survived, and she changed her name to Linda Chalice, and she married Dr. Chalice, played by Tom Atkins. Yeah. See, Halloween 3 does connect to the Halloween series. We'll get to that. Okay, that's when, let's see, um, what's it? Linda and Bob show up. So this is, yeah, PJ Sills, and Bob was originally going to be played by Dennis Quaid, but they couldn't get him, so they just got... So they they're talking outside their their van and they, there's like a line there that everyone makes a big deal out of, you know you know he says uh, okay first I'll rip your clothes off he's talking to Linda then then you rip my clothes off then we rip Lindsay's clothes off Lindsay Lindsay's the little nine year old girl everyone makes a big hoopla over that he's just joking around people he's just making a joke don't make a that's offensive so they go in there and then they make out. And then they get a call from Lori saying that Lindsay's not going to be there. So then they go up to the master bedroom and they have sex for 30 seconds. And that's fantastic. And then Mike, and Michael's up there. And then then the, uh, Bob goes downstairs and he gets a beer, right? And then he hears a noise and then he opens this cabinet and Michael's in there and he stabs him. And he picks him up and he stabs him. Then he, he looks at him he's like... Sounds like Darth Vader. And then when I was a kid, this next scene, it's uh, Michael, he's underneath a, like a, a, a sheet. He looks like a ghost and he, he has Bob's glasses because sexy guys wear glasses. Guys with glasses get all the women. So, and Michael's standing there and when I was a kid, I thought it was Bob. I thought Michael somehow propped Bob up to stand there and I was like, he's dead, he's dead. But yeah, I was way off. I didn't know that it was Michael because I guess the VHS tape that I was watching, you couldn't hear Michael's breathing. I couldn't really see him breathing. It was like so crummy looking. And he, she's like, um, can I get your ghost, Bob? See anything you like? And she's showing off her boobage. 
but you see like a little bit, like from like a nipple, then it pans up. You can't really see too much. So then she gets pissed because you know Bob's not responding. But then she she decides to call Lori on her um, the telephone back in the day with the head. It had a string attached to it. Okay, so the, while she's calling Lori, the Michael's sneaking up behind her, and he he takes the cord and he strangles her. Michael's a lot of strangling in this movie. Michael hardly stabs anyone. And then Lori thinks it's all a big joke, like, you know, Annie was messing with her, and she still thinks it's Annie again. And that, so then she, uh, you know, she goes up, and all the, you know, the kids are asleep now. Oh, wait, I forgot to say this. I forgot to say this. Earlier, Tommy was being, you know, silly, trying to scare Lindsay. And then he happens to look out, and then he sees Michael walking. And he, Annie's head is in his left hand, his left hand, and her legs are in his right hand. But then they show Tommy again, and then Michael switches it, and her her head is in his right hand, and then her her legs are in his left hand. How did he do that? He's like, was he like, was it like a pizza? Mamma mia! He switched her around or something? How'd that happen? Okay. All right, where was I? Okay. Okay, so Lori goes over to the uh, the Wallace house. Yeah, and then they play the the creepy this creepy music. They play that the whole time. I love the music, by the way. And then you know it's you know it's 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 nighttime. It's you know it's winding down. There's no trick or treaters no more. It's you know. So she goes over. She goes to the back door, and the back door is open, by the way. She walks right on in, and then she hears the noise upstairs. So she goes upstairs, and that's you know she takes her sweet ass time, and then she you know she sees that Annie is spread on the bed, her neck slit wide open, and there's his, the, um, the Judith Myers headstone. And so that freaks her out. She's scared now. Her best friend in the world is dead. Life sucks. Then she turns around, and then Bob's swinging around. <laughs> and then, for some reason, uh, Linda's body, that door swoops open, and then all her, every one of her friends are dead. And then she goes into the corner, and that's where then Michael swoops in. And then he stabs her arm. Michael has terrible aiming. So she falls down the stairs, and she, you know, she's, then he, he starts chasing her. This is when the big chase happens. This is the big, the, 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 the grand finale, the grand pooba. Yeah, this is what you've been waiting for the whole movie. So, and then she runs out, and she goes to the, the house right next door. Well, well, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me back up. I'm sorry. She gets to that door, the, the, the same door that she came in that was wide open, and Michael was probably upstairs, right? He was hiding. But somehow, during that whole time, someone put a rake in front of that door. When did that happen? Did Michael had go, was he like upstairs, was he downstairs or something? And she went upstairs, and he went to put that rake in front of the door, then he went around the house to go back up there to scare Rack. I just don't know. This movie makes my brain hurt. Okay. So she has to break the glass with her hand. And then she goes to the house next door. And then uh, while this is happening, Michael's breaking through the the, the kitchen door. To, she breaks into, like, this wood. And he's, like, he's chasing after her. And then all of a sudden, you know, when he's, you know, when she's going to the to, to next door, like, the neighbors, they don't believe her. So they just slam the door in her face. Well, actually, no, no, no. They, they, they open the window. They, then they don't even answer at all whatsoever. And she's like, help me! And then Michael, he's not there. Like, did he stop and take a Dr. Pepper break? I mean, he really takes a sweet time now. And then she finally gets it back to the to the Doyle house, and that's when Michael comes out of the house. What was Michael doing in there? Was he taking a pee break? Anyway, so the, the, the door is locked, and she left the keys over at the Wallace house, I guess, when she fell down the stairs. And then, you know, Tommy's upstairs asleep, so she has to get Tommy's attention to come downstairs all while Michael's chasing her, or while getting really close to her. That's suspenseful as hell. I love that.